If I took sodium and so, sodium chloride, which is which is a chemical, not, uh, and they also put it on tables. Um, but if you took sodium chloride and you put it in water, it would break. It would because of the water. Water is got polar bonds. You would see you would see sodium and chloride break up. Okay, the sodium has a positive and the chloride has a negative. Those uh, atoms that are now they're now ionized. And so the sodium is a cation and the and the chloride is an anion. Okay. Uh, pH. A lot, a, lot mis a lot of misunderstanding. pH of 7.35 is 10 times more acidic than 7.45. 100 times more than 0.55 and 1,000 times more than 6.5. So you have to understand when you're talking about a logarithmic scale, it's not, you know, there's a major difference between uh, between, the, between four and six, as you can see, it's a thousandfold. All right, because it's a logarithmic scale, and it's talking about the negative lo negative concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide. Acid is an electron stealer. Alkaline is a, is an electron donor. And by, so again, re repeating, repeating. So you'll leave here actually knowing it. Um, alkaline, electron donor. It's also called a reductant or reducing agent. It's also called an antioxidant. Okay? So, if we give vitamin C IV, what are we doing? We're, we're giving people electrons. Okay, that's pretty good. They need it. Okay, so water has a concentration, and the concentration, as you can see, of hydrogen, of the uh, hydrogen and the hydroxide uh, are equal, and that's pH of 7. Seven is distilled water, correct, right. Okay, uh, so zero to 6.9 is uh, an electron stealer, and unmet gain 7.0 pH, and the electron donors are 7.1 to 14, okay? Is it, I'll, I'll try not to say that. Cellular voltage, uh, because you, 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 you know, when we think of voltage, we think of the voltage in our house, right? 110 volts coming in and it's positive, what does that mean? Well, what it really means is the same thing. Coming in the house are copper wires, and what's running on those copper wires are electrons. Okay, so it's the same thing. They're just referring to it as a positive. Okay, so don't get confused by that. Um, but when we're, in the, when we're in the body, when we're, we're in, and it's in uh, solution, or in an ionic environment, um, when you see the negative sign, like sodium positive and chloride negative, what negative means is it has one extra electron. If it had two extra electrons, it would be two negative. And if it had three, it would be three negative. Okay, so those are electrons. So that's why when we're talking about current in the body, it's in an electrical, it's in a negative form. So I didn't want you to get confused with the voltage coming in your house and the voltage in the cell. So an electron deficient, electropositive is an acid pH. So health is having enough voltage or electrons for cells to function. What, optimal functioning, what is the optimal functioning of a human being? Well, we know what it is for bears and goldfish, but we have no clue for human beings. We know that Einstein used about seven to eight percent of his brain. We know that before the flood, people were living about 912 years. We know that uh, there are guys in uh, countries like uh, in Machu Picchu that are have, uh, fathering children at the age of 110. So what is the optimal functioning of a human? We have no clue. We're using, we're, we're, we're not anywhere near, we shouldn't even be thinking about that. We haven't even gotten to normal functioning. Okay. I think adulthood should begin at about 100 to 110. You just play around the first hundred years. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so feeling bad is a loss of voltage. You know, minus 
to minus 15 millivolts, sick is minus 10, can't get out of bed, minus 10. And once you get on the other side of the minuses into, into the electron stealers, yours is when you get can't. Uh, then you get really sick. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. Keith Brewer, PhD in uh, Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior, Volume 21 in 1984. The name of the article, The high, high pH Therapy for Cancer Tests on Mice and Humans. Came up with some of the conclusions from his studies. Pretty interesting. Step one is what he found in the, in the laboratory with, with uh, animals. Abnormal membranes mean that the glucose enters the cells, but the oxygen can't. We're going to talk about membranes in a minute. So if the oxygen can't get in, you get step two. What happens now, you can't use oxygen when you burn the glucose. And if you can't use oxygen when you burn glucose, it's a process known as substrate phosphorylation or fermentation. And fermentation results in lactic acid production. Okay. The other thing that is not, not in his conclusions is when a cell does that, um, it's going to need a lot more glucose to survive. Because a healthy cell is going to produce a lot more energy from, from one molecule of glucose because it can burn it with oxygen. So, okay. so step three, the, uh, the acidic medium, the DNA loses its positive and negative radical sequences. And the same happens for RNA, so you start to get damage, DNA damage. Step four, you have acid. You're, See, all enzymes in the body have an optimal pH and an optimal temperature. So the reason that you can't heat any foods above, plant or animal enzymes above 105, is they start to lose their tertiary structure, and they no longer function normally. Okay? So that's why you can't heat up food. You can heat up food, but if you heat up food, you're going to lose the enzymes. Okay? So the reason our body functions best, and we have an optimal temperature, our body functions best at 98.6 because that's the temperature at which all of our enzymes function. Except for our white blood cells. They function best at 103.5, which is why we get fevers. <clears throat> okay, so fevers are not Tylenol deficiencies. Fevers are the body turning up uh, the functioning of the immune system. Okay? So cold-blooded animals like a lizard and a snake uh, uh, need to get into a hot place when they're healing. So if they get a cut on their tail, they'll crawl onto a hot rock and bake. Okay? But remember, we live in boxes and drive around in machines, so we don't know that, so we start taking drugs when we get fevers. Brooke. Cancer cell takes one molecule of glucose and produces two ATPs, which are the energy packages. The healthy cell takes one molecule of glucose and makes 38 ATPs. So in order for the cancer to survive in that environment, it needs to get 19 times more glucose. And so it does. So it's eating glucose all the time. And the only way it can get glucose into its, into its cell when it's standing or sitting or floating next to um, a healthy cell is by having more insulin receptors because it has all these insulin receptors, it grabs the insulin, opens its doors more quickly, and gets fed. 